our congregation. And thank you for coming today and say this is the day that we all love you. And join with your neighbors and give them a hug and tell them that you're glad that they're here. <laughs>
mean, Ross can talk about anything that's uplifting and spiritual and encouraging. It's always um, wonderful to um, be given an opportunity to, to share one's own experiences. Uh, can everybody hear me back there in the back row? Okay. Um, uh, my name is Jerry Rector. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, or as I call it, misery. <laughs> uh, grew up outside of Detroit, Los Angeles, New York, back to Los Angeles, to where I couldn't stand it there anymore, and Spirit called me up to Canada, and here I am, and uh, I'm very proud and happy to be here, and I'm now a Canadian citizen as well. So I'm really very grateful for that. Um, I've been a student of metaphysics since 1980. Um, in 1995, and then, as you know, spirit just has a way of working, and your life can change dramatically. Uh, in 1995, um, I had sort of come to my uh, crossroads with uh, organized religion. I was raised Presbyterian, and it just wasn't quite working for me anymore, and I started going to a metaphysical church. 1995 called it the Church of the Inner Light. And for the first time uh, in my whole life, I felt like I had come home. Um, uh, shortly after that, uh, I went into the ministerial program there and was ordained as a metaphysical minister through the church. Uh, a few years later, in 1998, a group of us opened our own spiritual center called the, the, the Center of Divine Expression in Los Angeles. And we did services uh, on Sunday for a, uh, quite a while there. If anyone had told me a few years before that I was going to become a minister and then open my own church or be part of that, I would have laughed in their face. But of course, this is the way spirit works and uh, as part of my path. And I'm deeply grateful because it's led me to where I am today on my spiritual journey. And um, it has given me a foundation of safety and comfort that uh, that I've been seeking most of my life. So today we're we're speaking about manifestation. Um, I'll share a couple stories. Um, I've certainly been blessed in my acting career. I've been an actor for 29 years now. I'm a director and filmmaker. Uh, uh, over the past few years. And I knew that just having my acting ability, I would be able to direct without going to film school or anything else. But it required me to instead was to hold the intention for that. And I've been doing that for 10 years or more now, holding the intention of, of directing, of being a director of feature films eventually. Um, usually you start off doing short films, you work your way up. Um, but I've held this uh, intention fervently for 10 years or more. And I, over the past few years, I've made a couple of short films. And then this summer, I was act, asked to act in a movie, in a feature film. And within days after performing my duty as actor, I was asked by the act, then director and producer to co-direct the movie. So out of the blue, I'm directing a feature film, which is what I had been intending for 10 years, and I did nothing more than get the ball rolling with some small projects, but literally a directing job for a feature film fell out of the sky, and it just doesn't happen like that, ever. So that's, that's, uh, that's one example of, uh, of uh, manifestation. The first, the first thing that ever happened to me uh, I have a twin. My twin brother Jeff still lives in Los Angeles. Um, we were in fifth grade, I think, sixth grade, and there was a, a uh, field trip to the local amusement park. And it required $10 a piece to go there. And I don't know if we didn't have the money at the time or <coughs> if 
my brother and I had done something which my dad wasn't too happy about, uh, which was probably more the latter. Anyway, he said we couldn't go. And we were very upset about it. He absolutely refused. Um, so we trotted off to school. And on the way to school, it was $10 a piece. On the way to school, we found a $20 bill in the gutter. So we went to the amusement park. My dad, uh, however, my dad felt so bad about the argument that he left work early at noon to come home and take us golfing because he felt so bad. Well, we weren't. <laughs> we weren't there. And, uh, we got something for it. But anyway, that was the first sort of uh, instance where I said, wow, that's what a coincidence. And of course, at that age, you know, uh, in my experience, I had to put, put two and two together. These, these stories um, uh, continue. Um, one of my, um, uh, in 2002, as I was getting ready to, to immigrate here, um, I actually had some time and some money. And uh, I got on the phone and I called everyone and said, I'm finally moving to Canada. Catch me now because I'm, I'm gone in two to three months. My friend Teresa called me the next day and said, oh, we're going to miss you, uh, Jerry. But you'll guess, you'll never guess where I'm going next week. Oh, and Machu Picchu was my next sacred site trip that I wanted to go on. They're usually about $3,000, right, because you're paying for the guru and their trip and everything else by the time you're done with it. But that's just the way these things work, right? I said, so I'll, I'll do that one. Again, I just intended it. When the time is right, I know it'll happen. That's Machu Picchu, Peru is the next trip that I want to take. And I know that spirit will manifest it at the right time. I don't have to do anything more than that. Held the vision. Teresa calls me the next day and says, Jerry, you'll never guess where I'm going next week. I said, where? She says, I'm going to Machu Picchu. I said, oh my God, I'm so jealous. I will, that's the next trip I want to go on. And uh, we talked about it. She said, we're going for two weeks, and the shaman's taking us, and it's only $1,250. Mm. I said, that's incredible. That's, that's so cheap. I said, that plus airfare. She said, no, that includes airfare. <laughs> I said, can I go? I said, yeah. Uh, uh, email this person you probably can. A week later, I was in Machu Picchu. <laughs> so events just happen like this when we set the intention and allow spirit to do some of the work for us. And I believe we also have, uh, uh, we have spirit guides, yes, in one form or another. And they too, some of them specifically have jobs which are just our gophers. So when we set an intention and we release it, then, then the spirit guides can go out and start doing some of the legwork. So, uh, uh, like in, like in uh, how many of you seen The Secret? The film The Secret. Very, very powerful movie. Uh, and, and mostly the message of that movie is speaking about manifestation. And that is, if you want something, you intend it, you think it, because thoughts create, and then by that strong intention, Manifestation happens and it's brought into the physical, brought into our, our physical world. Um, there's another part, does, the, does the, the secret speak of emotion? Attaching emotion to that? Yes. Yeah. The, 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 one of the most uh, 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 key points uh, in that is when you intend something, you have to attach an emotion to it. So if you want, if you want, say, Let's say you've always dreamed of owning a farm or a ranch, and you think about that farm or ranch. You have that picture in your mind. You have to put yourself there and feel yourself there, right? You have to attach an emotion to it. You have to have an emotional uh, attachment to that so that it, spirit really it, it just gives it the extra power that it needs. Um, uh, I'll share another uh, couple of stories with you. Um, when I lived in Los Angeles, I, uh, my neighbor wanted, me to, wanted to sell me his uh, 300 CX. 
his, uh, his red sports car, 300ZX. And I had just enough money to do it. I, my buddy came over. We were driving to Laughlin, Nevada for a water ski gambling weekend. Went to my ATM and somehow $1,000 had gone missing from my account. Somehow, I, I don't know. But I said, I can't get the car now. It's, it's too, big a, too big a stretch. So I pull a couple hundred dollars out. We go, we go to Laughlin for the weekend. We go water skiing at sunset, beautiful <coughs> afternoon, fantastic. We go back to the hotel, we shower, we go drive into Laughlin, which is like Las Vegas, but on a river, smaller Las Vegas. Go into one of the casinos, and me and a guy are talking to, uh, talking to a friend, and they're at the quarter machines. I get bored, and across the aisle is a nickel machine. I don't even know if they have nickel machines anymore, but, but they did, and there was a nickel on the floor. So I picked it up and I plunked it in the machine and nothing happened. Go back to talking to them, get bored, um, go for a walk. The next aisle was, was quarter machines. And I found there was a quarter on the floor in front of the machines. Now, if anybody's been to a gambling town, nobody leaves pennies or anything on the floor, right? <laughs> so I pick up the quarter and I plop it in the machine and nothing happens. Go back to talking to them, get bored again, go for another walk, and a couple aisles down to the dollar slot machines. On top of the end of the dollar slot machines was a rack, a full rack of 20 silver dollars. I look around for the guy or gal that walked away to find the money change that, that somebody left for a second to run and grab the money changer, right? Nothing. Nobody's around. Nobody's coming back. These are mine. I take the rack, I start plunking them in the machines as I go down the aisle. I had maybe one, two, or three dollars left. I get the machine on the end, put the rest of the money in, and I hit exactly a one thousand dollar jackpot. <laughs> Same day. And the money changer came around, he said, You know, you hit that the hard way, too. I said, I'm not surprised. So of course I bought I bought the car. I bought the sports car. About a month later, I go down to my parking space where my new car is there, and there's a crumpled up bill on the ground behind the car. So I think, oh, somebody dropped a dollar bill or a five dollar bill. I open it up, it's a one hundred dollar bill. So I think, I wonder if there's any more of these around here. <laughs> so I get down on my knee, and I look under the car, and there's another crumpled up bill, and it's another hundred dollar bill. So, so these things are possible. We just, we just have to, we just have to hold the vision for what we want, right? Um, uh, like Barb said, I've been a, been an actor. I've uh, guest starred on Star Trek: The Next Generation, NYPD Blue, uh, Sliders for uh, science fiction, other science fiction fans. And um, I've had a long, blessed career. And that, too, has just been continuously holding the vision. And it's been a long, arduous, and still is arduous career for me. But it works because I keep holding the vision. Um, and the key, too, for manifestation is, is to hold a strong vision, to put the emotion behind it, And then expect that it's going to come forth. Um, I have lots more stories to tell. I don't know how we're doing on time. Yeah. Getting pretty close. Getting close? Yeah. I'll leave you with that. Hold your intention, <coughs> believe it, feel it, and expect that the universe will support you <coughs> in manifesting that and bringing that forth for you in your life. Thank you. Boy, if that doesn't just tell us exactly what our thoughts are in this church, eh? that, that uh, you hold on to that thought and everybody gathers that thought together. That's so wonderful. We're just um, a healing agency here as well. We have a healing ministry. And just as Jerry was saying, that you have to hold the thought. If you need healing, you have to hold 
the healing thought. If you are giving healing to other people as a facilitator, you hold the thought that they are going to be well. And so it all manifests, no matter whether it's money or healing or ideas or whatever. So we're really glad of that. We have uh, an absent healing request bowl at the back. And when we have uh, facilitators that are in the congregation here that will go to where the red chairs are there, and anybody who would like hands-on healing can have that done during the meditation. And because, as we say, when you have an idea, you can manifest it. And the more people manifesting with you, the stronger the energy. So everybody that's putting one thought, one prayer out, adds 10 times, 10 times, 10 times in perpetuity. And so while we're doing the meditation, we ask that everybody join into that meditation for healing for themselves and for healing else. And so the healing facilitators want to work back to
allow that energy now to go forward into the world and not only touch the world's leaders, but to touch the animals, the vegetation, the waters, the atmosphere, so that they may be healed. And let us be thankful to the animals and the vegetation and the minerals that give of themselves and serve us so greatly and feed us so well.
she was with Unity in Action in New Westminster for a number of years. I attended Unity for a number of years and uh, found that there's only one thing different between the Unity Church and a spiritualist church, and that is that they don't give clairvoyance from the rostrum. Mm. They basically have the same philosophies that we have, and that uh, life is to be lived the way that Jerry told you. Have the power of the intention and get that intention concentrated and get the passion behind it and make sure that spirit is going to bring that energy, keep that energy going. And that's exactly what you'll find when we have a chance to have Charlene talk here, as we do with a lot of people from other different churches, so that we see that they're more alike than we are different. So come next week and try to uh, support her for that time. We also are going to do a practice that's known in the Orthodox Church as White Gift Sunday. Now, you don't really have to wrap them in the white tissue paper, but if you want to, you can. But it was used to be kind of pretty to wrap the gifts up in white tissue paper and have it all on the roster <coughs> during the week before Christmas. And then we will be giving that uh, food to the food bank, and they will distribute it to the needy people in the White Rock area. So on the 16th, if you can bring your goods and we'll put them in the big hamper. And just like we did at the big dance, we ended up with three big hampers of food going to the food bank. And people who didn't want to bring the dried ingredients and canned foods and things, some of them donated cash straight to the uh, food bank. And so we ended up with $52 plus three food bank, you know, three hampers. That's pretty good for a little church, I think. And uh, we're getting bigger all the time. The other thing we want you to kind of remember coming up in the new year, probably in the around March or April, we're going to have a spring bazaar. And I know I've got very talented people in the congregation, and they have very talented friends. And we would like them to get together and get their crafts together. And we will have craft tables, and we will have baked goods. So maybe even start baking now and uh, storing it away in the freezer, or do those shortbread cookies that are better the year later, or, or the Christmas cakes or whatever. Something that you can put away and start building up for our big bake cell. And maybe you'd like to come to this, Jerry, because we're going to have a little tea room at the back, and we're going to have scones, and jam, and uh, Devonshire cream. Sounds you good. Have your, you can have your tea cut bread. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be such a good time that we're going to have. So that's going to be in the spring. So let's get working on that now. It's a fundraiser for the church. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we would like to welcome any new people. Are there any new people for the congregation? Okay. Um, would my coordinator maybe take a white package off the table there and give her, keep her hand up so she can give you a go? And I think Jerry would like to have one too. I'm new too. He's, yeah. he's new to the church here, not new to spiritually. New to the church here. And, uh, so we have a little gift in there that will remind you to come back maybe and remember us. Um, we kind of hoping that you'll read the little flyer that's in there about what we are and what our, and what our mission is, and that would be very good. And do we have any birthdays, anniversaries, or birthdays in the year? Anybody have any birthdays or anniversaries? No. Well, we're going to have to say happy anniversary. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to say Celia one song, I guess, and let me 
give you the opportunity now for be part of this church by sharing your free will offerings. And you stand and go to page 21.
and you're going to be kind of have a little carrot that's going to kind of wander you down the road so that you will move outside of this little comfort zone that you've been in. Uh, you're going to find that uh, some of the things that you would have liked to have done as a younger person and you've sat in the back burner are now going to, you're going to get the courage to do that. And there is a lady that's coming through in spirit and I would say that it's on your father's side of the family. Now, I would say probably not grandmother, but a great aunt, a grandmother's sister, okay, on your father's side. And she had a great talent of being able to do tatting. You know what tatting is? Yeah, okay. And she was quite the person that could do the tat and make this beautiful lace claws and things. And she did a lot of that. And she said, you have talents that are inside you that you just don't really realize are beneficial to everybody. So just as she tatted these lace, beautiful laces, you should be creating the things that you want to create. And know that people are going to really appreciate that. Okay? And she just kind of brought the tatting in so you know which person it is, so you can ask the family if you don't know. Do you know who the lady was that did the tatting? It was your grandmother? was her sister. Could be. Uh, so it, it could have been grandma. Uh, maybe she and her sister both did this work. But they're saying that you have a lot of talent. Okay. Yeah, May I say something? Yes, go ahead. I'm drawn to this woman over here, but I'd just like to add, while you may not be doing the tatting, you'll be doing your own thing. Yeah. So it's kind of tit for tat. <laughs> <laughs>
letting somebody come in close to you. And you know, if we don't take chances, we, well, as Jerry said, if you had to put the dollar in the slot machine, a thousand wouldn't have come out. And sometimes it is a thousand fold. And that is just the way it is. And whether it be the fact that I need to invest time, energy, and money in whatever it is I'm going to want to manifest. And I do feel that you need more people around you or more loving people around you, not critical people, but you need a lot more fun. Uh, I have one energy that works with me, and I think I'm going to send him home with you for a few days. Mm-hmm. And his name is Sean Rafferty. And if you find that you're being impressed to do silly things, that's who it is. It's old Sean Rafferty. He likes to get everybody into a little bit of trouble. And so he just likes to get your energy up and get you dancing, and you might want to dance to the music that comes on, especially if it has any kind of a, uh, an upbeat sound to it, especially Irish music, he'd be old Danny boy and all those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just, he just going to go home with you. He's going to stay with you for a few days, and you're going to be finding your, your energy is really up, and finding that as that happens, that you're going to feel the change, and then you're going to say, well, you know, I'm the one that's in control of this, I'm going to make the change and make myself feel a lot better. Okay? Okay. Maureen, I'm going to come to you. I know what's going on with you, but I'm going to put Jerry on the spot. Because I think Jerry can pick something up for Maureen. So as I'm coming in with you and your energy comes up, I mean, but not, you know, but uh, as I'm coming into you, I feel that you really are putting like 100% effort out. A lot of people say 150%. You can't put 150 in, you can only put 100 in. You get 150 back or 5,050 back, but you're putting 100% of your effort in everything that you're doing right now. Don't run yourself too thin. Don't run yourself too thin. Uh, if you have, even if you have to phone me and say, you know, I'm coming to church, but get somebody else to work in the kitchen, whatever, for a short period of time. Don't run yourself too thin. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Do you feel something with this? Um. I, uh, I, I, I was just picking up that there was a, some sadness around you, and I don't know, I don't know what that is, um, uh, uh, but it's very present, and, and it, just, just release it. However, however you feel guided to do that, and if you, if you don't know how, ask, ask for guidance. Uh, because it needs to be released. Uh, it's not serving you anymore. And, and uh, whatever the situation was, be grateful, thank the situation for being there, but it's not serving you anymore, and it's time to release it with love and grace. Thank you. Great. Thank you. You know what, Jer? I'll tell you. You don't know Maureen and your dead on. And we'd like to thank you for all that you've done today and everything that's going on here. And especially for that message because that's very meaningful. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to do the closing prayer and then we're going to go in a circle and we're going to sing our goodbye song and we'll be joining us for coffee and tea and conversation and anybody who's able to help us stack their on with cards so they can be put away. Okay, so Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that Jerry was brought here today to share this wonderful power of detention with all of us that we find that we can acquire those wonderful dreams that you give us if we just have the time, the energy, and the money invested in everything that you give to us as a thought, as a seed. And we ask that you carry us through the next week in joy and happiness till we meet again. Amen. Okay, we're going to go down and hold hands. I'll do it. Get a chance to hold hands with this good looking dog. Look at the dog. Look at me. I'm a dog. 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 I'm a
search engine, and search engine is just a place you just type your name down there and where, you know, where, where location you're living at. You can actually find your own address. Uh, anything you want to find, it's all look. That's all um, available for you to see. Most people don't realize that. You can find anything and everything about someone, unless it's protected by the federal government. But if you're getting given that permission, you can find all these things on the net about anyone or anything. And it's and it, like I said, the show itself, BBS Radio, is all to do with spiritual awareness. It's about the awakening of yourself and those who need to understand that they're afraid to understand. Because a lot of times that's why we have our spiritual churches, is why we have all types of congregations across the world. But there's still a shortage. Because a lot of people like like Don has said, or Doug has said, Doug doesn't watch TV. Okay, well there's church services on TV, but yet he's not going to see that church service on TV, but he's willing to turn to the internet and say, I'm watching this. Because he knows very well that he feels comfortable with it. And he's around that. But he can make a decision by turning it off. Or do something else. Well, this is the thing that I think is wonderful. I, why I really ask these guys to come up, and why I'd like to really thank them, because the awareness that's coming from the people that are online, and I will tell you, I don't agree 100% with everybody who's broadcasting. They don't agree 100% with everybody that's broadcasting. It's up to you to discern what's good for you, as it is in church. Um, which pathway is best for you? That's what you need to discern. But I really thank them for, you know, taking this step forward because this is wonderful. And I'd like to give them a big hand for all the work that they've done. Now, I think uh, we're going to be just about at the end of the service. I can't believe an hour's gone. It's just absolutely wonderful. Uh, we are going to ask everybody to join us in the circle here. Uh, we have a small circle this morning, so that won't be too hard to do. And the closing song will be God Be With You, and we will say a prayer just before the closing song. Everybody give us a hand and we'll join the coffee and tea.